Hello folks and welcome to this week's episode of Utility Vehicle Build Tutorials. Now, this week's episode I know I am a couple weeks behind on things. Um, unfortunately I did run into some issues in previous weeks where I get started on recording this and then something would happen and I'd end up getting pulled away and would... In simple terms, I would lose motivation to come back to this. So I do apologize for how late this video is in coming out and hopefully I'll be able to get next week's done on time. A um, few things before we get started on it. This week's episode we are building a crane based on one that Splitsy builds in his Survival Impossible series. Um, just like the cherry picker that we did uh, to start the whole series off with. So I will be linking the corresponding episode of Survival Impossible down in the description, along with a couple of mods that I'm going to be using uh, for this, or scripts rather. So I've got the park script that we'll be using again, um, as well as a base vehicle that I'm going to be building this crane on the back of. Um, the vehicle itself is one of my own design. Um, obviously it's not one that you have to use, but you know, for the purposes of this video, it's going to be the one that I'm using. So let's go ahead and get into that. Yeah. I actually just finished getting all the lights put into this hangar. Let's come down to where I've got my little truck. Now this is designed, um, and you'll see this on the workshop page. I have it left relatively spartan and whatnot, um, as it is intended to be modified by the end user, so by you guys. But, you know, I've got a couple different trailers for it in the same collection. Um, this one I have recently modified, though, to make use of the short suspensions. And I also remembered to add a button for the sliding tandem. Because I felt that that was important. But what we're focusing on today is going to be this advanced rotor here because this is going to be what we are building our crane off of. Now, to start things off, let's go ahead and bring our HUD back. To start things, we're going to set a programmable block here in the very back. Um, I'm going to use the Automaton's programmable block, although you are certainly welcome to use the standard one in its place. And then around this, we're going to go ahead and set up our base platform. And this is what everything is going to be built off of. Uh, sometimes I wish build vision wasn't as temperamental. So this is going to be our back section and then so this is going to be a 3x3 platform that we're building off of. On the back side we're going to do a full line across on the three and then up one more on either corner. To the center of this we're going to go ahead and use the light armor slope 2x1 base, the half armor block, and then a light armor slope tip that will then have another one inverted below it. It looks like going to give us a slight issue so let's go ahead attach that for the moment so 
off of this piece, we're going to do another light armor block out to either side. And then on either end, we'll go back to the two by one slope tip. So on these two corners up here, we are going to place a hinge. And for these, it doesn't matter so much if we have these little tick marks facing in the same direction as these hinges are going to be powered off. Just the same as the two that we are going to be placing on the 2x1 tips on this lower section. Now on to these two, we are going to place a piston and these ones are going to go with a the two by one slope base and then go forward two light armor blocks and then p place a piston onto each of those. All right, now, this is where things can sometimes get a little bit fun. Because our next little bit here is we're going to connect these two pistons across. And to do that, the easiest way, at least on this particular section, is we're just going to take a couple of merge blocks. We'll get those cleared out. Then on the ends of this, so on this little strap bar, we'll place a two by one tip. And onto these, we are going to place a hinge. Then go through on both sides and take out the hinge part. And manually place in a new one on both sides. Then we can go through and get these hinges, attach, and attach. Then we can come through and turn all of these So now, all the elevation movement for these is going to be controlled by these two pistons here. So now off of this, we'll stack out pistons to give us a total length of three. And on each of these sections, We are going to place some more cross supports. And what we're going to do for these is starting with this back piston, we'll reverse that forward 
And here you can use merge blocks again. Or I like to use the weld pads from the advanced welding mod. So get those placed. And then retract. Now I could do both of these at the same time. We are going to lock that, which I should have done at the beginning. So you can do both of those at the same time. However, I like to be able to, I prefer to do them one at a time just so that I can, you know, make sure that both of them do uh, actually lock into place. And there we go. And now this is going to be where things start to get a little tricky with this particular build. So on the ends of these pistons, we'll place a 2x1 slope base with a hinge facing down. And we'll come in on the back of this. And there's a couple ways that you can place this in. So what I'll do is we'll take this uh, half slope block. Place that in. And to make sure that all of this is playing nice. We'll get these two top parts. Merge blocked in. That'll give us a nice stable lock. So off the back of this then. Place a little armor slope tip. And get ourselves a third hinge placed right there. Now, off the back of this one. Place a piston there and these two these two hinges will start with the slope base sometimes it can be better to do this while standing on the ground so we'll place one on like so and then onto the back of these another like so and then both of those get a piston on them we're just going to move this out of the way for the time being So across these, we'll do kind of the same process. Of connecting a cross. Fuel critical.
so on the back of this one. I'm going to do because we need a point for this piston to connect onto. So we'll place a slope there. They slope there. They hinge on here and a hinge part here. Make sure that we get rid of this hinge part. Or we get those two connected in. We'll go ahead and get our last two Interesting, I haven't had it do that to me before. Sometimes it can be just a little temperamental. Anyways. And once again. Every so often you will run into that where some of the blocks don't want to place nicely the first time. And so when you get that, you know, fiddle around, you know, if you have to, you know, sometimes you'll find that you have to move where you're standing. Now what we're going to do here is we are going to set our minimum for the moment to 0.3. And we're going to take and toggle that hinge off. And bring this one to reverse just until those meet. Let's give this you want to make sure that you've grabbed. right piston and we can go through and attach For this we want our maximum distance to not be the full two because that's going to you'll end up when it goes to a full extend it you'll get kind of a pop and then it takes it a moment to bring it back so this if I remember correctly 1.7s are good maximum there we go. Fuel critical. Actually, I think we can push that just a little bit further. Of 
course it does help if you make sure that you have all your hinges turned off before you try and move that. Looks like that was a bit far. Yeah, you'll see that that kind of bounces around a little bit. Then we will set that minimum distance back to zero. And whatnot just not quite yet since that is going to come pretty close to clipping there so what we're going to do is we're going to take these two pistons and we're going to rename those So that I can then come in here and set those to reverse. Because now we need to set up our grapple. So for that is relatively straightforward. We'll use the two by one slope base, set one of those on each of the piston heads. And then I will take a half light armor block and stick it in like so. And then just to make sure that all of this is joined up together nice and neat. Merge block it all into place. And then take those off. And from here, we will then do a rotor and a hinge. Now you can do two hinges on this so that you can get that full side to side movement as well. Um, personally, I don't generally do that. Excuse me. I don't tend to do that all that often, um, though for me that's more a matter of personal preference. Then of course on the end of this we need a way to lock onto things, and to make it so that we can fold this up all nice and neat, I like to use just the standard magnetic plate. So with this, go ahead and take that and I'm going to turn off use for parking and turn off the auto lock. And just like that, you now have the basis of your crane set up. Now, in terms of controlling this, there are a few different bits that you can use. Um, you can set up the script to run through like a programmable block, and you can set that in, you know, like right in here with a camera to use with it and whatnot. What I like to use, and this is going to be another mod that I will have listed in the description, is if we come to our cockpit, or come down here, actually, you have the Spacebar Cockpit Emporium. And I like this for the wide variety of different cockpits that are added to the game. In particular, I like to use the factory cockpit as it sets in very nicely right in here and gives you a almost perfect view um, while you're working with the crane. So if you're someone that you like to do a lot of stuff through first person, this is a very, you know, very good block to use for that. Um, 
in terms of the vanilla cockpits, you can almost do something similar to this, though I have found that it doesn't it doesn't often work out quite as well. Um, with that said, you know, if you don't mind not being able to pull this in completely, um, I do believe the new DLC cockpit. You know, you could set this in in place. Um, you'll have to move the programmable block. And you'll likely have to limit just how high these front pistons will extend. Um, so you have to adjust their maximum push distance. But you could put this in place of all the center structure and have a very clear pulley centered uh, seating point for this. But for as as things are right now, let's go ahead and get to renaming. And this is a part where having the build vision is rather helpful, at least in my experience. So for this batch of pistons, we're going to name them Upper Boom. And these ones... going to name them the lower boom. And then this center one we're going to rename as the crane elbow as that's basically the function that this serves. Now for this going to rename the rotor to the grapple wrist, the hinge, going to be the knuckle, and there's our mag plate. Then we can come into here. And what we're going to want to do, we'll want to find that advanced rotor as well. And rename that. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take everything, rename our cockpit here. Going to turn off control thrusters and gyros. And then we're going to take everything named crane. And put it into a group named park. Come into our programmable block. And I will generally rename these just to make them easier to find in my control panel. You know, I'll group them up at the top. Um, depending on the world I'm using them in, I will have them set as either a zero dot or a nine dot, uh, depending on what other things I have. On a vehicle like this, I'll do them as a zero. Programmable block. and name it accordingly. We'll come into edit, browse, scripts, and grab our park. So 
stuff. Come into our custom data here. Domain. So we're going to rename these. Upper boom. Lower boom. And grapple. And then we are going to compile. There we go. So with that set up, now if we go into any of our control groups here and we go into our custom data, so we'll want to ignore this main. We want to focus on the upper, lower, and grapple. And this is where we're going to set up the controls. And this part, while not terribly difficult, is a little bit tedious. So we'll start with our elevators. We're going to come into our custom data and we're going to set these as up and down. And I'm going to set these, we'll start at half a meter per second. Then we'll do a control all copy and paste. And that does make it a little bit easier. And so just to do a quick test of things, do a quick recompile. So now my up and down keyboard controls. So on my key bindings, which I've left these default space for up, C for down. Come back in, we'll find our rotor base, come back into our main, and left, as negative, right, as positive, and there is a possibility that I may need to switch that. Turn off our rotor lock first. Nope, those are good. What I will do though, is I'll bump those up to full value. elbow now this I'm going to set into our lower boom and this will be up and down as well so we'll do that as a initial Pile. And for this, I 
think I will reduce that speed just a little bit. Although... Drop that down to point three. Just because when you have it moving faster, it will jerk around a lot more. Lower boom, come into our custom data on this one. And this is going to be forward and backwards. Now, because we're going to be moving all the pistons together, we want to have the speed relatively low um, just because when you have them stacked, the speed does multiply. So we're just going to set these as 0.2. So copy that. And then just paste it. Into each of those. And that moves nicely. So we can do the same thing on our upper. And done. So now for our grapple. And I have this set as a separate group just for some of that ease of control. So we're going to set this with the left and right. At a speed of one. And this I'll use just forward and backwards. to reverse those. this as well. You know, of course it does help. And just like that, we now have 
the main controls for this setup. So then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our programmable block and we're going to run arguments for upper boom, lower boom, and grapple. And this will let me switch through I think I'm hitting the ceiling in here. Do you want to be careful as you're bringing this in as if you you know if you're not very careful with it you do run the risk of um having clang freak out at you but once you get things situated um you can then go through and set a return command that will basically return everything to a home position. Now, about the only thing that, at least on this particular setup that I will do that for, is the rotator base. So return position is going to be zero, return speed is going to be one, and priority is going to be one. that to come back to our control bar and we'll set in another to return so we're just going to turn ourselves off to the side hit return and this will bring us perfectly centered and this is really good if you have a, a little bit of OCD like I do and absolutely hate having that cockpit you know, having your rotor off center on builds like this. And just like that. You now have yourself a functioning crane. Now let's go ahead and give you guys a proper demonstration of this actually working. Now you do want to be mindful, you know, because of how this thing is all built together, um, you will see a decent potential for clang and phantom forces. Um, so building this on a heavier vehicle is definitely recommended. Let's go ahead. I'm just going to drop one of those there. And then so that I don't accidentally destroy this. I am moderately disappointed in myself for the fact that I don't have this set up on here um, by default. I'm 
going to set the maximum distance for this as 0.5 to start. Lock that down. Then we also need to make sure that we have our switch lock for that. So raise that out. Now, this is certainly one of those bits where having a camera mounted on the end of the crane can uh, come in useful. actually paying attention and not doing like me and making sure that you have your share inertia tensor turned on for everything except that lower you know for everything except your base rotor so everything connected to that you want to make sure that you have your share inertia share inertia tensor on But there you go. And just like that, you guys now have a working crane. Now, next week's episode, we're going to be building this same crane, but we're going to be doing it in large grid. Um, fundamentally, it is still all the same process, although there are a few slight design tweaks that you do have to take into consideration when putting it together. And so, you know, I feel like it is worth a, you know, worth its own video. So that's going to be our next episode. And then after that, um, if you guys have any requests or suggestions for things that you'd like to see me uh, do a build walkthrough on, let me know down in the comments. Or if you're a member in my Discord server, feel free to toss a suggestion in there as well. Um, and yeah, I appreciate you guys coming out to watch this particular tutorial. I hope, you know, it was clear enough for you guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. So, until next time, take care everyone.